All right, everyone. Welcome back into another NBA DFS video. My name is Eric Paul Zine. You can follow me at 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be breaking down the small three-game slate on Tuesday. And just right off the bat, guys, this Tuesday slate is a more difficult one. You know, yesterday was pretty easy with the injury news that came out. It's very easy to make a good, you know, profitable build. This one is going to be a little bit more difficult because we don't really have any good values via injuries. So we're kind of going to be mixing and matching the lineup process here. I like trying to go with AD and LeBron in a lineup, kind of chasing that recent upside they have, but the lineup process is going to be kind of unique tonight. Just a reminder, though, if there is that slate breaking uh, news that changes the slate, we're going to cover that in the Discord chat before lock. So make sure to check that out as well. Just a reminder as well, if you guys like any of the tools that you see in this video that's available for Occupy Fantasy members, click the link in the description below for that as well. All right, let's get into the injury news for today. So like I mentioned, we don't really have that much injury news that we need to be you know, touching on too much. The biggest one, I guess, would be uh, Porter Jr. being out. And that that really just means that Bruce Brown's minutes are probably going to be up. Um you know, his per 36 is about 30 fancy points. Uh, but the problem with him is that, like, he is priced up on this slate. So it's going to be more difficult to fit Bruce Brown in, even though he could be a good play. Uh, his per 36 with MPJ off the court, not not all too great. So, you know, that's like the biggest injury news that we have uh, thus far. That's going to be changing the dynamic of the slate. OK, so what that we will just get into the breakdown of the slate. So as it sits right now, the top plays are going to be uh, Nikola Jokic. OK, and we can see, like, given the price discrepancy between him and Luka, you probably do want to be playing uh, Jokic a little bit more. But I actually like the idea of going with AD or LeBron, who are both cheaper as well. Those to me are going to be my starting points tonight. Um, I, I just like that. They've been playing extremely well uh, lately. Um, and I, I just like the upside. Like the upside is that those two go for over 100 DK or FanDuel points combined. So from there, let's look at the FanDuel value. Lamar Stevens popping up again. Uh, I don't like this, but he is popping up. Why? The minutes are going to be there, and he's at an extremely cheap price point. Okay. Can he get to 18 DK points? Sure. He got to 19 DK points last game. Can he do that on FanDuel? He can. Okay. Not a terrible play on tonight's slate, given the fact that those minutes should still be there. He's just not a a great play for a three game slate though might be good enough that might be what we're forced into you know and for now i'll just toss them in there and like once again like i'm putting them in there hoping <laughs> that we get better value at that price point range that we can pivot off of him but for now for this morning breakdown that is what i'm going to be doing from there kayla martin for miami on fanduel you know we can see the price discrepancy there as well 600 dollars cheaper on fanduel makes for a much better play on fanduel he's projected to get right around 28 minutes as well so yeah he could be a decent price point play and then Jokic, yes Jokic is a little bit underpriced on fanduel i think he's someone that you certainly need to go out of your way to play on fanduel uh bojan bogdanovich been a little bit less consistent lately uh but he is certainly someone that does have the upside and i do like him on a play as a play on fanduel uh Someone you can look at there. And yes, Bruce Brown on FanDuel, much better play there. So like we can see already that FanDuel might be the better route to go tonight for DFS purposes. If you guys are someone that plays on both FanDuel and DraftKings, probably going to be playing on FanDuel more tonight because there's better price point plays. So now switching it up into DraftKings, we can see uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. very cheap on draft. And we know who Tim Hardaway Jr. is as a player. He's a hit or miss play. Okay. Can he go off? Yes, he can. And is this probably a, a too cheap price point for him? Probably. Um, so on DraftKings, that's a play that I like. I like the fact that we can play him at guard or small forward or forward, I mean. So certainly someone within the realm of possibilities that we can be looking at playing. From there, Lamar Stevens again. Jared Allen popping up there is a little bit cheaper on DraftKings than he is on FanDuel, so I do like that. He is currently questionable, okay? You know, if he does play, and he does play a full allotment of minutes, this would be a great matchup, a matchup that he went for 38 DK points against earlier this season. We just don't know that. There's still a lot of injury news that we need to wait on for him. If his minutes are restricted at all, not going to be a great play. If they're not, going to be a great play. So we just got to wait and see on that injury news for him. Lonnie Walker, I'm fine with. Uh, DFS, fine with. Patrick Beverly, minutes, yeah, 25. <laughs> see, that's the issue with this slate. It's like you would have to force in some less stellar plays and just hope that they give you 5X. Like that's Lamar Stevens. He can get you 18 DK points at his price price point you're happy with that on tonight's slate then real quickly just looking at the game spreads is there anyone that we need to be targeting no there it isn't and that's part of the difficulty here uh the detroit miami game could potentially blow out and that's the biggest worry so let's get into the projected ownership and then we'll get 
getting into the lineup process and then getting out of here. All right, so the highest projected on players on the site are going to be Tim Hardaway Jr. That makes sense. Tyler Hero is also a player that I think is going to be too cheap on this slate. Like we can get probably around 40 DK points at 7.2 in a favorable matchup against Detroit. Yeah, this just seems like way too cheap of a price point. I don't really get the thought process with this price point. So uh, yes, I'll be playing Tyler Hero. And I think like going Hero and um, Tim Hardaway Jr. is a great starting point for tonight, at least as it sits right now. Then from there, people are seeing that Bruce Brown as a play. You know, I agree with that. Uh, Jared Allen would be a great play if he's going to be starting uh, and not have his minutes restricted at all. Uh, Bam should be a solid play. Jamal Murray, a decent price point play. Don't hate it. Uh, and with Miami, we've got to make sure everyone's going to be active. Back end of a back to back for them. You know, it wouldn't be surprising to see someone sit. Uh, Westbrook at a cheap price point for a guy that probably will get to around 35 DK points tonight. Um, you know, should be a solid price point play. Uh, Killian Hayes, I'm, I like as a play as well. He's not really popping up as someone that's that's too chalky. So let's look at FanDuel. All right, so FanDuel, yes, Bruce Brown going to be chalky on FanDuel as he should be. Uh, Luca a little bit cheaper on FanDuel. You can certainly play him there. Uh, Jamal Murray, ah, that's that's interesting that he's popping up there. Caleb Martin, you know, extremely cheap on FanDuel. That makes sense. Tyler Hero is still pretty cheap on FanDuel. You can certainly play him there. Um, Mobley? Uh, no, I don't really like that. That's weird. Okay, so we kind of get the picture of what people are looking at. Let's get into the lineup process for tonight. So we already have the players that we want to be starting our builds out. And obviously the model really liked Jared Allen. So let's go ahead and put him in there as well. From there, I like the idea of playing LeBron and Anthony Davis. I want to play those two. Obviously, the bronze been really on kind of a tear. Even on tonight's slate where it is a three-game slate, I would kind of be fine with 48 out of him, okay? Don't love that, but if that's the floor we're getting... I do love that. Last time against Cleveland, that's the biggest issue. Only went for 41. So that's where it starts to not be good. Obviously, anytime he sits, if you can play Anthony Davis, you want to play him. Now, Anthony Davis has been on a tear recently as well. It's going to be tough not to just roll with that on tonight's slate. Like 80, 71, 52, 58, 57. Like he has been on a tear. Shooting the ball a ton. 30 times in a game. I mean, come on. 27 times in a game. I mean, come on. Uh, so yeah, he's going to be someone that I think we should be looking at on the slate. I, I think it would benefit him too if Jared Allen were to sit, um, you know, only way for 43 in the ma last matchup against him. So that'd be the biggest worry. But I think as it sits right now, he's someone that we want to be going out of our way to play. But that really kind of constricts what we can do on this slate. I mentioned in passing that I do like Killian Hayes uh, still tonight. Uh, just at a cheap price point for a guy that should be getting around 30 DK points. Okay, we can see he's kind of been doing that the last you know, five games. His worst uh, night was 27 DK points, and he just didn't really do much. But we're getting double digit shot attempts at a cheap price point. You know, that is going to be encouraging to me. As it sits right now, he's one of the better price point plays, I think, on this slate. And I'll just be putting Bruce Brown in there for now. And then we'll be seeing what we have left. Unfortunately, we are left at the power forward spot because we don't have a power forward yet. If AD was still a power forward, that'd be great. I'd feel pretty good about this. As it sits right now, we're kind of just forced with going with someone like DFS. Not something that I particularly like doing, but... You know, can he have another nice stretch in there where he gets around 25 DK points? He can, and that's not out of the realm of possibilities. Seti, could he also get 25? Sure. You know, we're just kind of hoping to get lucky. So we got to figure out where to go at the power forward spot. And that's kind of where I think LeBron is kind of just the play. Try to find a way to pay out for him because I don't really think there are that many great power forward plays. Like Bogdanovich, sure, much better play on FanDuel. I'm fine with him as a play. Aaron Gordon, can he get to around 30 DK points? He certainly can. FanDuel points as well, he certainly can, but there's just a lack of good power forward plays. So maybe you even, I, I don't know, I'm just hoping that we get a good value power forward play to pop up as the day goes on. That's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for. And that'll really shape the lineup process a little bit better. But that's all I have for you guys for this NBA DFS breakdown. Uh, once again, if you guys enjoy the coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe. We enjoy putting out NBA DFS content. And if you guys do that, that helps us be able to put out more content for you guys. All right. Thanks for watching and good luck tonight.